something called xenoestrogens, because this is important. So many synthetic, meaning man-made chemicals that we've learned how to make in the past 50 to 75 years aren't things that are naturally found on the earth. And so many of them persist in the environment and they don't easily degrade. We call those persistent organic pollutants. The word organic here refers to their chemical structure and that they contain carbon, not because they're organic like something you might buy at a health food store. This is organic from a chemical structure standpoint, totally different meaning of the word. Some of these persistent organic pollutants have been found to act in the body like hormones, in which case we call them endocrine disrupting chemicals or endocrine disrupting compounds is also sometimes used. Disrupting, meaning they throw things off, right? Because they're acting like hormones, even though they aren't. We use the word endocrine because the majority of hormones in the body are endocrine hormones. The poor paracrine ones get left out. So some of these EDCs or endocrine disrupting chemicals seem to act on the thyroid gland. Others seem to be related to obesity and regulation of body weight, body weight but many of them actually will bind to and stimulate estrogen receptors on our cells and therefore act like estrogen in the body. So they call them xenoestrogens. Now the word, the prefix xeno is not there because of xeno warrior princess, but I kind of wish it was. But xeno means foreign. So this is a foreign compound that's introduced into the body, but it acts like estrogen in the body. Interestingly, they first discovered that some of these uh, plasticizers and things could be xenoestrogens because in the olden days, when they were doing lab research, the petri dishes that they would grow cells in were made out of glass. But then when plastics were developed, they thought, oh, this is great. They're disposable. We don't have to wash these. They don't break. This is great. So they started doing their research in plastic petri dishes. So there was a lab where they were studying breast cancer cells. And all of a sudden, they found that their breast cancer cells were growing like crazy. And it took them a while to figure it out, but they finally realized that whenever they put them in the plastic Petri dishes, the cancer cells grew like crazy. But in the glass Petri dishes, they grew the way they normally did. So that's when they first realized that there are compounds in plastics xenoestrogens that act like estrogen. And estrogen in some types of breast cancer will cause it to grow more quickly. That's how we figured this out. So what are some of the sources of xenoestrogens in our life? So many synthetic, meaning man-made chemicals that we've learned how to make in the past 50 to 75 years aren't things that are naturally found on the earth. And so many of them persist in the environment and they don't easily degrade. We call those persistent organic pollutants. The word organic here refers to their chemical structure and that they contain carbon, not because they're organic like something you might buy at a health food store. This is organic from a chemical structure standpoint, totally different meaning of the word. Some of these persistent organic pollutants have been found to act in the body like hormones, in which case we call them endocrine disrupting chemicals or endocrine disrupting compounds is also sometimes used. Disrupting meaning they throw things off, right? Because they're acting like hormones, even though they aren't. We use the word endocrine because the majority of hormones in the body are endocrine hormones. The poor paracrine ones get left out. So some of these EDCs or endocrine disrupting chemicals seem to act on the thyroid gland. Others seem to be related to obesity and regulation of body weight, body weight, but many of them actually will bind to and stimulate estrogen receptors on our cells and therefore act like estrogen in the body. So they call them xenoestrogens. Now the word, the prefix xeno is not there because of xeno warrior princess, but I kind of wish it was. But xeno means foreign. So this is a foreign compound that's introduced into the body, but it acts like estrogen in the body. Interestingly, they first discovered that some of these uh, plasticizers and things could be xenoestrogens because in the olden days, when they were doing lab research, the petri dishes that they would grow cells in were made out of glass. But then when plastics were developed, they thought, oh, this is great. They're disposable. We don't have to wash these. They don't break. This is great. So they started doing their research in plastic Petri dishes. 
So there was a lab where they were studying breast cancer cells. And all of a sudden, they found that their breast cancer cells were growing like crazy. And it took them a while to figure it out, but they finally realized that whenever they put them in the plastic Petri dishes, the cancer cells grew like crazy. But in the glass Petri dishes, they grew the way they normally did. So that's when they first realized that there are compounds in plastics, xenoestrogens, that act like estrogen. And estrogen in some types of breast cancer will cause it to grow more quickly. So that's how we figured this out. So what are some of the sources of xenoestrogens in our lives today? These are just a few, there are a lot. But one is atrazine. Atrazine is the most commonly used weed killer in the United States and the second largest selling herbicide in the world. It's mostly used for agricultural and commercial purposes. It's not sold in a lot of the things that you would buy for your lawn, although it is in Scott Bonus S Southern Weed and Feed. Now, what we know about atrazine is it's a persistent organic pollutant. It doesn't break down easily. So what happens when it rains, right, is the water runs off of the fields, picks up the atrazine, and runs into the streams and the rivers and the lakes. Water treatment facilities, right, so for your city water, don't remove this. <laughs> so it ends up in our drinking water. And we know that it has adverse effects, meaning harmful effects, on amphibians and fish who live in water that's contaminated by atrazine. It acts like estrogen on them. Male frogs will even start making eggs when they're exposed to high levels of atrazine. So it's really a potent xenoestrogen. Because of that, it's been banned in Europe for years. Not because they know for sure that it causes harm to humans, but because it seems really plausible that it would. In Europe, they use a different standard for regulating chemicals. They use what's called the precautionary principle. If it looks as though something is likely to be harmful, then their regulatory agencies are able to police those and set limits or ban them. In the United States, we use a different standard, which is that of proven harm. So you have to have lots of research to prove that these things are harmful to humans before you can regulate them. So that's a little tip for you. Another xenoestrogen that we find commonly is BPA or bisphenol A. It's found in a lot of plastics, especially polycarbonate bottles. So Nalgene bottles used to be made with BPA until people realized it was a xenoestrogen. So then they reformulated their plastic most plastic water bottles are now BPA free, but what's interesting is we don't know if those new plastics are any safer. We just know that they're not BPA. BPA is still used, however, in lots of other things. It's used to line food and beverage cans. You see the picture of the tomato soup there. In the olden days, when I was your age, whenever you ate something out of a can, it kind of tasted a little bit like the can because they didn't line the can with anything. So it was the food was sitting right up against the metal, the aluminum or whatever it was. Nowadays, if you look inside a canned soup or anything else, there's this kind of little plastic lining on the inside, and that helps retain the flavor of the food and prevent the metal flavor from getting into it. However, in most cans, that's BPA. They did a study with physicians where they had to drink, or excuse me, they had to eat some Campbell's tomato soup every day for a week. And after a week, they had measurable increases in the blood levels of BPA in those individuals who ate that soup. It's also used in thermal paper for receipts. So that's that kind of slippery paper where instead of the um, machine using ink, it actually uses heat to make the uh, paper turn color. You'll know something's a thermal receipt if you've ever left it on the dashboard in your car on a hot day and the whole thing turns black. That's a thermal receipt. So BPA is used in those. We know that in vitro, meaning in the lab, in petri dishes, and we also know in rodents, like in mice and rats, exposure to BPA does increase risk of breast cancer. We also know that BPA is present in the blood and urine of 96% of American women. We don't have any data looking at whether BPA levels in women are associated with increased risk of breast cancer yet. It's a hard study to do because we all have BPA in our bloodstream. All right, third and final xenoestrogen is phthalates, 
which is weird to spell. These are plasticizers. They're found in flexible PVC pipe and other plastics. So if you look on the bottom of a plastic and it has a number three in the recycle sign, it likely has is PVC and has phthalates in it. Interestingly, they're also put in a lot of personal care products, things like perfumes, lotions, cosmetics, um, even some of the time released coatings on medications. You can see on the right here, they look at phthalates in beauty products, things like hairsprays, deodorants, nail polish, hair mousse, fragrances, a lot of those body sprays, for example, those scented body sprays, probably even Axe has it. Um, and so these are ubiquitous in our environment and they don't break down. And so almost all US persons test positive for them. We know that in rodents who are exposed to phthalates because they seem to act like xenoestrogens, they have decreased Leydig cell function. I'm like, what are Leydig cells? Leydig cells are the cells in the testes, in the testicles that make testosterone, right? So estrogen can prevent Leydig cells from making testosterone. Phthalates cause that same thing in studies of rats. There's also a study that showed that in boys who have higher body concentrations of phthalates, they have what's called a decreased anogenital distance. So that's the distance between the anus and the genitals. Why do they measure that? Well, in female bodied people who have feminized genitalia, the anogenital distance is small. In masculinized genitalia, the anogenital distance is long. It's, they are far apart. So measuring anogenital distance is a way for clinicians and researchers to assess to what degree somebody's body has been feminized versus masculinized. So we know that these compounds do in fact act like estrogens on our bodies. So many of the chemicals we're exposed to on a routine basis act on our body like estrogen. So this might be why we're seeing earlier pubertal development in girls, right? This may be a part of that. We don't know. It would be really hard to do a study and figure it out. It also might be why we're seeing some reproductive uh, disorders in boys. As you can imagine, it's actually hard to do a lot of good studies on this in humans because we all are exposed to all of these things in varying amounts all of the time. So that's xenoestrogens. Fascinating and frightening. So many of the chemicals we're exposed to on a routine basis act on our body like estrogen. So this might be why we're seeing earlier pubertal development in girls, right? This may be a part of that. We don't know. It would be really hard to do a study and figure it out. It also might be why we're seeing some reproductive uh, disorders in boys. As you can imagine, it's actually hard to do a lot of good studies on this in humans because we all are exposed to all of these things in varying amounts all of the time. So that's xenoestrogens. Fascinating and frightening.